Why, howdy do there, folks. I'm just a friendly American here. Not a German. I'm totally an American. No way you can tell that I'm a German. Okay, I'll stop that now. How's it going, guys? Squeezilla here. And girl, of course. The Urza M10. The German... Some say... War crime tank. <laughs> An interesting vehicle. Um, the Panther G model uh, that this is based off was converted to look like an M10 Wolverine tank destroyer. And from a distance, absolutely, this thing does look like one. It's a very impressive Trojan horse. But how is it in game? Well, we'll talk a bit about that in a moment. First, let's talk a little bit about the background. Now, this tank was used in Operation Grief. Uh, the brainchild of the Supreme Leader of Germany, um, and commanded by Otto uh, Gorenzi. Operation Grief, uh, meaning Operation Griffin, uh, was part of an elaborate special operation during the Battle of the Bulge in the winter of 1944, uh, Skorenzi had become one of the Supreme Leader's most trusted operatives, especially after he succeeded in rescuing Mussolini in the autumn of 43. The mission was to sneak a force of 250,000 soldiers behind enemy lines dressed as Allied forces using Allied vehicles. The plan was to have 20 armoured cars, 100 jeeps, 40 motorcycles, 120 trucks, 15 tanks, and 20 self-propelled guns. They were to sneak in and basically take the bridgeheads. Uh, they were going to be taking the bridges of... Where am I? Uh, I think it was Manaus and I forget the other name. Anyway, they were taking two bridges um, to basically stop the English advance and allow a counter attack uh, using the 6th Panzer, uh, not the. the First Panzer, first SS Panzer Division. Um, now this failed miserably because the Germans only got basically two Shermans, and they were pretty much buggered. Um, so they didn't have the tanks, so they needed to make a stopgap. And what they did with that is they made the Erz M10, which is a disguised Panther. Now, this tank was very interesting. It was just, it was based off the Panther G model, which was the latest Panther at the time. The Panther G had slightly better armor than the Step First models. Um, it no longer had the um, gun trap things like that, where it was getting beaten before. The main modifications were done on the turret of the tank. They removed the commander's cupola, uh, the iconic part of the tank. They also had to get the M10's unique turret shape. So what they did is they had five sections of sheet metal, around 3.4 millimeters thick, and they were cut and molded into the shapes you see here, which allowed the tank to look like the M10 Wolverine. Uh, they also manufactured false gun shields, so the machine gun, the actual machine guns would be hidden as well. The bow saw a lot of work done because of the bullnose um, transmission of the American tanks. The sort of bulbous shape of it, they had to rework the um, metal in that area to make it look like the American tank. Um, they also, of course, put the section on the back here to make it look like the uh, iconic sort of shape of the M10 as well. The biggest thing that gave this tank away were the tracks and the gun muzzle. 
Now, the muzzle breach could not be taken off of the um, L70 gun um, because it wouldn't operate safely. And of course, the overlapping road wheels looked nothing like the VVSS um, suspension system of the M10s. So it really did make this tank stand out in that respect. But from a distance, this tank was very hard to spot. Now, the operation was a big old failure for Germany, uh, which is probably a good thing. Um, there was lots of rumours of what this operation was going to be used for, um, from taking Allied command in Paris to reinforcing besieged towns such as Dunkirk and Lorient. Um, but it wasn't for that. It was just to get the bridgeheads and allow for a German counter advance with the um, First Panzer divisions. One of the biggest misconceptions and misdirections of information was um, a group of German commandos who were captured on the 17th of December said that they were there to they were going to try and kidnap General Eisenhower and that proved to be a very good thing to say for them because it really did put the Allies in a very worried position uh, with this it caused a number of friendly fire incidents this whole um, basically the whole charade caused the Allied units to be very concerned and the probably the most casualties from this came just from friendly fire incidents so it wasn't an overall success um, out of I think it was 10 made um, do, 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 they believe 10 made I think it was uh, six or seven of them got destroyed um, and after they were taken back to be investigated they were all scrapped so overall it wasn't a very big success well that's the history of this tank the M10 or as ersatz so I have to keep holding my breath there as I say it so we've seen it in action there in the game um, I'm just jumping a bomber here. We're going to stop the video here because that's all I wanted to show you. The rest of the game is a loss. We get spawn camped and absolutely overrun, of course. Um, I just wanted to go through a bit of the history on this. Now, when you look at this tank as it is, you sort of think, well, it doesn't look much like the M10. But when you have a side-by-side -side comparison, you can actually really see the effort that went into this. One of the things that really stand out are things like the gun brace here. That's on the M10. Uh, if we just hop to the M10. Oh, wait, no, I have got it in my lineup here. Good. Jolly good. Um, the M10 had a fixed brace here. Um, so the Germans added that. So, you know, from the side, these look relatively similar from a distance, but it's mainly at the front that they look very similar. So this section here would be covered up by this metal plate so you don't see this machine gun, of course. But from the front, you can sort of see they do look rather similar all in all, apart from the muzzle brake and the 50 cal not being on top. That, of course, it is a big uh, part that gives it away. So, overall, it was a very interesting look and an interesting try. As I said, it was a rather big failure, but Allied uh, specialists and the investigators surmised that had the tanks been deployed with a bit more care and cover, they would have been extremely effective and dealt considerable damage. Of course, it is all speculation, but if this had been used sparingly and used, not sort of sent in in a heavy push for a last desperate attempt, it could have really caused some damage. In-game, it performs pretty well. It performs like a panther. You do have some sort of additional spaced armor, and because this is the G model, technically, it, is got, it has got slightly higher armor than the, um, the D, which you have standardly, which is your standard 5.7. Um, although, 
it doesn't show the upped turret armor um, because the G, as you can see, has slightly better turret armor. The hull armor is the same, of course, um, but the turret armor should technically be the same. So there should be the 110 millimeters at the front, and yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that one. It's not much of a difference, but. I guess it's because of this extra plate here. Maybe they did remove some of the mantlet just to just to effectively have it working better in that regard. Um, but all in all, the, the tank really works well. If you've driven a Panther, you know how this goes. One of the big advantages of this tank is because it has a lower silhouette, it's harder to spot sometimes, so that really does help in its respect. You also do have some spaced armour. It's not really much extra spaced armour. Uh, you've got your 80mm plus an extra 3.5mm of armour. So you end up having 145, about 150mm of effective armour at the front. Having that little bit of extra spaced armour can help in some respects, of course, but it's not a huge difference maker. It's a rather neat looking tank, and it is a tank that all collectors will want, of course. It's something that, that is just unique and interesting. And I can see this being a real headache in sim battle. This is where this tank is going to shine, in sim mode. Because at a distance, as I say, it looks like an American tank. It looks very similar to the M10. It even looks similar to the uh, M18. Um, you know, from a distance... Oh, wait, no, that's covered in all types of crap. Let's just see. Um, you know, from a distance, it has that similar shaping. So it's not identical, but it has got that slight shape of the M18. So, again, it may cause some problems in that respect, much like the um, Russian Panther causes in sim battles. Anyway... I do hope you've enjoyed this video, um, please let me know in the comments below what you thought. As I said, just a bit of gameplay footage there, from what I've played with it, it's pretty fun, it is really just a panther. Um, it does have a little bit less of a weak spot of course because it doesn't have that cupola on the top, um, but all in all it is a pretty neat little tank and it's well worth getting, it's well worth putting in the effort to get. Okay guys, until next time this is Squeezeler out, bye bye.